In this lesson, we'll be creating a 3 plus 2 pocketing toolpath. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a multi-axis position contour toolpath, simulate toolpaths to validate motion, and create a duplicate toolpath and modify its parameters. Let's carry on with the file from the previous lesson. And if you've had any difficulty, you can upload the supplied file multi-axis positioning v11. From here, we've taken care of the roughing and the contouring of the top, as well as the drilling and tapping of the four quarter 20 holes. And then we created a spot drill and drilling operation for each of the four mounting sections. So now we need to take care of some multi-axis positioning pocketing toolpaths. So we're gonna use this to pocket these small areas here for the mounting positions. So to do this, we're going to go into a 2D contour toolpath. Remember, we've already drilled these holes, so all we really need to do is go back and machine the final bore size. And to do this, I'm going to use the 3 8 flat end mill. I'm going to come into the geometry section, and I'm again going to use tool orientation. So we want to select the z-axis, and again I'm going to use the bore, to orient the z-axis and notice that that automatically sets the x-axis correctly for us. Remember that our tool is going to be moving in x and y and the z-axis is going to be the direction pointing to the spindle. So this allows me to come in and create the contour in that area. So the next thing that I want to do is just go in and define all the rest of my parameters. Because we're using a contour and we're going to be setting up our parameters, we don't need to worry about rest machining in this case but we do want to make sure that our heights are correct. The height is going to be based on the selected contour, and if we rotate this around to a top position, notice the location of my clearance and retract planes. They're based on the geometry of the fixture and the part itself, so you can see exactly where the orientation lies. Do note also that they're pointing toward the coordinate system, and those values are based on that coordinate system. In the passes section, we're not going to be leaving any material behind, so there's no stock to leave. This is a fairly minimal cut, so we're not going to do multiple depths, and we don't need to worry about roughing passes. I am going to do multiple finishing passes to allow me to step in a couple times. So I've got a couple small step-ins, and then I want to talk about my lead-ins. So now everything in here are going to be the default settings, and I'm going to select a pre-drill position or an entry position. So these are going to allow me to determine where we're coming into. Now generally we don't have to do this with a circular boss, but it is a good idea for us to tell it exactly where the center of that hole is. Notice that it says no contour was selected. Back in the geometry section, I'm going to come in and make sure that I select that contour and then say OK. So now my toolpath is set up, the contour comes in, and notice how far away it starts with the clearance. When we're dealing with multi-axis toolpaths, we need to ensure that we have enough clearance for the fixture to rotate around to get into position. Now we have this contour created, but notice there's a warning. It tells me it cannot use drill positions because keep tool down is not active. So if we edit this and go back to linking, we can deselect this entry position and have it recalculate this. And notice because it's a circular boss that the result is actually the same. Let's do a quick validation of this. So I'm going to go into simulate. I'm going to make sure that I go past my original 3D adaptive roughing. I'm going to get rid of the pocket, the drill tap. I'm going to go through my pattern, each position in the pattern, then each drill operation. And then we're going to take a look at machining this pocket. Now we just need to repeat this process on all sides of each of these mounting positions. Because we did that first operation on this position, we can go ahead and take care of it by mirroring this operation. However, it gets a bit complicated because we won't be able to mirror the mirror pattern. So we want to make sure that we create all of the positions as needed, and then we can go back and create that mirror. So what I want to do is I want to right click on this and duplicate it. So then I want to also make sure that we edit the duplicate. We're going to modify the geometry because now this time we're going to be cutting from the other side. 
We also want to modify the tool orientation. I need to flip the Z axis. Notice when I do that, the Y is pointing down. So I'm also going to flip the Y axis or the X axis because we want to make sure that we're rotating the same orientation around. So we're going to say OK and take a look at the result. So now if we select this orientation, notice that Y is still pointing up and we're changing the Z and X orientations. And then again, if we take a look at this by simulating, this time I'm going to jump all the way to the end and then I'm going to go back to operations. So this allows me to come in and machine this position, then come in from the other side and machine that position. And notice that we have plenty of clearance with the rest of the geometry. There's still a lot more to do here, but this is a great time for us to go ahead and navigate back to our home view and save before we move on to the next step.